All right, good morning. Well, if you are a mom, we would like to honor you and love you. So if you would stand up and just let us applaud for you and give you lots of love. Mothers, if you do mothering. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, moms. <laughs> great, great. Well, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Um, <clears throat> did you call your mom? Okay, just checking, just checking. Um, you know, uh, more phone calls are made on Mother's Day than any other day of the year. Yeah, it's true. Um, so, you know, in the science of mind, we have sort of a, a, because we're a metaphysical church, metaphysics being we're interested in what's beyond the physical, we have kind of an interesting take on, uh, on things compared perhaps to other traditions. So what I believe is so, is I believe that before you came here, before your soul checked into this hotel, you met with a council of elders in another dimension, and probably also with some particular souls who would be very important to you on this life's journey, people like your mother and father. And you kind of came up with a plan of what was going to take place in this life. By plan, I mean the big strokes, not did you have frosted flakes or lucky charms this morning. I mean the big, big important strokes in your life. And so um, what I believe is so is, uh, so another way of saying this is that I believe that you intentionally chose the family that you were born into and everything that came with that. Now I know if you're thinking, uh, like one woman said to me earlier this week, she said, oh, Dr. Mark, I had the most wonderful mother and I said, God bless you, that's fantastic. I love hearing that. That, is, that in itself is just extraordinarily refreshing. You know, like, yeah, good for you, that's great. But if you're wondering, why would I pick these people for the things that were not so good? Well, for the same reason you would pick those people for the things that were good, right? That for the things that were good, great, that's, that's terrific. For the things that were not so good, I believe that why our soul would choose those long before we arrived here was that those would be the perfect people in the perfect circumstances for our soul's evolution so that we would go through the things we needed to go through and have experiences we needed to have so that we could become strong and grow and more conscious in this life. Now why this is really important is science of mind teaches us that what we take responsibility for those things we can change, we can grow, we can heal, we can evolve in those areas. So I found this to be a pivotal uh, teaching for me personally, that when I went from they did it to me to, oh, I chose it, the world opened up. It opened up for me. Because, oh, I can see. Now, I, all under I understand. We all can see why we, if you're on board with this. And if you're not, it's OK. It, really, it's fine. Just be quiet. <laughs> I can see why we all chose where we came in for the good things, and I know it's very puzzling why we would choose difficult situations sometimes to be born into, but again it comes back to because that would be the perfect fodder for us to become the people we're supposed to become in this life. I remember hearing Werner Erhardt, Werner Erhardt fans, the days gone by. Werner Erhardt talk about you never really become the man or woman you were intended to be until you finally get clean and clear with your parents. You just never the big shot you think you are till you're healed with mom and dad is what I'm saying. Right? So this is really, I think, very, very important for us. Um, you know, and now, and now you know, the whole notion of Mother's Day or honoring mothers actually goes back to ancient Greece and Rome that there were festivals held to honor the mother uh, incarnation of the goddess. Um, uh, but the clearest modern precedent for Mother's Day is the early Christian festival known as Mothering Sunday. Now, the modern holiday that we're celebrating today was first celebrated in 1908. Yeah, at St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Yes. Uh, and that, is, that, that church now is the home of the International Mother's Day Shrine. So if you're ever in West Virginia, that is something to check out. Um, so a woman by the name of Anna Marie Jarvis was the founder, uh, and she did this as a way of honoring the sacrifices that mothers make for children. What a beautiful idea. Now later, she um, 
And she worked hard for this to become a national holiday, but then she felt it got over-commercialized and she worked to have it rescinded. That never happened. Uh, but President Woodrow Wilson in 1914 uh, declared uh, the first, uh, May, May 9th, the first official Mother's Day, and he asked Americans to give uh, a public thank you to their mothers and to all mothers everywhere. Again, I think that's just a beautiful, beautiful idea. So the real you and the real me, we teach in the science of mind, the spirit of God that you are, the incarnation of God life that you are, is truly, purely love. Yeah, that that's, that's the truth about us. And because we believe other people sometimes are something less than perfection, then the problem with that is that that's what comes back to us, because we believe in cause and effect. If we believe that other people are the source of our problems, even if that is not spiritually accurate or true, it will seem that way for us because this is a universe of cause and effect. Now, you can believe, if you choose, that it's all their fault, you know, but because we teach cause and effects, if you believe, for example, that the wounds your mother caused you are real, then you will feel their effects. If you believe they did it to me, you will feel the effects of that. Now, to forgive your mother, if that is up for you, it, what I think that's, why I think that's important is that symbolizes, that symbolizes a lot. It's, this, it's also true, though, that to forgive anyone else, you know, we are released into a new experience of life. Why you do this is you get free. But I also want to tell you, if your mother is here on Earth with us still, or if she is not, it is incredibly important to pray for her every day. It's also important for you to pray for her every day, regardless of whether you liked her or not, regardless of whether she was your best friend or you thought she was Cruella de Vil. It, either way, because two things happen. One, your soul gets set free, and when you are set free, it is for eternity. And two, it supports and helps her soul be more free for eternity as well. See, because we teach in the science of mind that your relationship with someone is not just a physical relationship. Your relationship is spirit to spirit. Your relationship is really about consciousness. So the spirit of God in you is having a relationship with the spirit of God in your mother. By the way, that spirit never ends. So your relationship with that being is never, ever ending. Isn't that great? Yes, we are still together. We are still all on the journey. And so if, if, if this chapter with your mother and this earthly incarnation was a good chapter, wonderful. And if it wasn't, well, wonderful, because you're going to work that all out anyway, because that's what we're here to do, I believe. You know, so I think um, I, here, here's how, I, how it occurred to me this week, that God is love, love is real. And the love that we have experienced is real, and it becomes our job in life to let all of the rest go. Just let it go. And I know people say, oh, how do I do that? How do I let it go? I've tried to let it go so many times. And that's what it takes, generally, many times. Many times, many times, many times, let it go. And then we pick it up. And then we let it go, and then we pick it up. Let it go, we pick it up. We hold it tighter. And then we struggle. You know, I always say I've let go of plenty of things in my lifetime, and there are claw marks on all of them to prove it. You no. Know? Um, that the not, the not loving we experience, I think, has no real effect on us unless we carry that belief. See, the problem for so many is not that something happened long ago um, or that somebody said something unkind or did something unkind. The problem is that we believed it, and we've still been running with it ever since. You know, that we, we thought, oh my gosh, that must be true. So th the problem isn't that, you know, look, everybody has had unkind things happen to them. Everybody has also done unkind things. But if you aren't in complete forgiveness, ask yourself, what am I getting out of this? Because there's a, we say in the science of mind, if something is so, there's a reason why it's so. And if you're not in complete forgiveness, if you haven't let it go, there's a reason why. And I want to suggest this morning that that reason is because you're getting something out of it. There is some little, perhaps even in a perverse way, payoff for you, right? What do I get out of this? What do I get out of it? Well, maybe it's the story I get to tell. Or maybe it's an excuse I use to play small. Or maybe it's justification for my limit, what I think of as my limitations in life. But here's the big picture. The big picture is that we all 
You, me, our parents, our grandparents, our children, we are all souls evolving. Nobody checked into this hotel a perfected Christed being. Hmm? Even St. Paul, it took him a number of years. He didn't know Jesus personally, but he was Christed in his lifetime. You know, he became fully orbed with the awareness of his oneness with God and then got to live from that. So just because someone, you know, I think, I think when we're little, we think that anyone bigger or older than us knows everything, that they're supposed to be absolutely perfect in every way. And then when we become older and we find out that's not necessarily accurate, that just because somebody's a mother doesn't mean that they were suddenly given all the secrets to the universe. You know, somebody's a mother and, oh, by the way, their soul is continuing to learn and grow and evolve just like ours. You know, that they're, they're on the grow just like we are. So even if they are no longer here, I think it's important to remember that we can contribute to them by praying for them, by holding them in good consciousness, because their soul is continuing to grow and evolve. And we can help be a part of that process. And in turn, it also, I believe, really, really helps us. You know, huge changes in consciousness take place when we realize that the enemy is not out there, you know, out in the world, in the media, wherever we might think it is, you know, that the real enemy is our own thinking turned against us. This is science of mind. You know, what we are believing about someone that is not life-affirming, what we believe about someone that is less than loving, you know, that actually works against us. And we think, well, how? How can that work against me? These are just my thoughts about them over there. Because all minds are connected. And what I put into the universal mind about other people, I'm telling the universe that's what I believe about myself. What I think you deserve is what I'm telling the universe I think I deserve. And so the enemy, I think, is our tendency to not let go of things. You know, that we get so, so committed that we, we are not able to, to move forward. But the great news is not only is the enemy within, right, so is the solution we teach in the science of mind. That if there is an enemy, it's not out there, it's in here, and therefore if there is a solution, it's not out there, it's also within us. You know, so the personality loves to blame others. You know, you're at fault for my problem. That's what the human personality does, right? We always think, I'll throw the heat off. It's like what little kids do. You know, you want to throw the heat onto somebody else. Oh, me, I didn't eat the cookies. He did. Mm -hmm, oh, me. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't the one. You know, so the personality also, I think, loves the fantasy that someone else will, um, will show up and make things all better. Someone else is going to be my savior. Someone else outside of me is going to show up and take care of this. But you know, the power of God, the power of love, exists within each and every one of us right now. We teach that. Absolutely. So my, my, my own tendency to be selective about where I want to be loving, you know, uh, that's the enemy. You know? My ability to love is my salvation. My ability to say, you know what, everybody is doing the best they can do. Everybody has always done the best they could do. I've done the best I could do. I mean, think about it. The times you've done the worst, most awful, stupid, terrible, unloving things in your life. Did you get up that morning and say, boy, today I am filled with the presence of God. Let me be a jerk. <laughs> no. No, it was probably on the days you did that, your own self-loathing was so high, you know, that, that you had to like... Um, Remember in the old days with Tupperware, they used to burp the Tupperware? I, I thought that was just a great selling point because people, you know, I love that little And it's still, probably still today. Uh, and, and so I think that when we are unloving, it's like we have to let a little of that steam off ourselves. So, you know, here's what's so, I believe, is that your mother, my mother, all mothers everywhere are perfect, innocent children of God. Hmm? And that is our job spiritually to grow into seeing them exactly that way. Because what we hold to be true about them is what we're telling the universe. This is what we hold to be true about us. So uh, what I'd like to do is, as we start our spiritual practice this morning, we're going to do a little prayer for mothers everywhere. So I invite you to close your eyes, sit up tall, and we'll settle in together. Okay? 
So just begin by bringing your awareness to the pattern of your breathing for a moment. Becoming still, breathing in, breathing out. And just let all the other stuff go. All the story, all the other concerns. Just let all of that go for right now. As I speak this word, dear God, sweet spirit, thank you for the gift of all mothers everywhere. I know that there are no two that are the same, so I say thank you, God, for the new mothers, those who are enduring sleepless nights with infants in their arms, and thank you for the busy mothers who are juggling the pressures of home and family life. Thank you, God, for the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children and for the patient ones who are always there to forgive and engage with their kids who are not always as fabulous as they think they are. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with the young adults that they care for. And for all those women in our life who do mothering, so that would be mothers and aunts and grandmothers, perhaps older sisters, younger sisters, friends, teachers we've had along the way who have given of their love and support, who have fostered us in some way. Because if we tell the truth, mothering comes from lots of directions, that we have all been mothered by many wonderful, loving women in our lives. And so we let this prayer, this energy emanate out from us so that it touches all people, all women everywhere. So those people who don't hear from their kids today, we let our intention be that they would feel this love. For those mothers who have gone on to the next dimension, I know we are connected, and we let this prayer support their growth, the growth of their soul. And for each and every one of us today, I speak this word that we let go of anything that does not serve us in any way, anything that limits us or holds us back, whether it be a thought or a belief or an idea, and know that the people on our path have all been placed here by divine appointment. And so we include in our prayer today all of our family members and friends and loved ones. We know that God is right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in so that those situations that look difficult or make us fearful, we say God is present right there. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And if there's any stone that we've left unturned, any place where we have yet to forgive, any place that we have been unwilling to love, then we address that right now to the very best of our ability. And if you find that it's difficult to love this morning, then ask that spirit of God within you to love them through you. If you find it's difficult to forgive this morning, ask the spirit of God within you to forgive them through you. So I know that we are blessed by being together today, that we have all been raised up, that healing is happening, and that our life is good right now because our life is one with the life of God. I give thanks that this is the truth. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks and I release this word. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen.